Phase Change Unit, Lesson 1.3, Investigating the Molecular Scale. In this lesson, we develop models to show our ideas about motion and arrangement of particles in a solid, liquid, and gas. We then investigate phase changes at the macro scale and the molecular scale. This involves scale, proportion, and quantity, and a hands-on investigation by using a digital model. Step-by-step -step plan would involve completing the warm-up first in Step 1. In Step 2, you have the option of doing the hands-on observation at home if you have the materials, if you can follow the safety guidelines, and if you have supervision. Otherwise, you can just watch a video that's posted on Classroom with this lesson instead. In Step 3, you're exploring a new simulation on phase change. Uh, in Step 4, you're using that same simulation to respond to one of three claims, which one you think is the most uh, relevant with what you know so far, which one's the most correct. And then in step five, you have a chance to reflect on the lesson and respond to a, qu a question about the simulation and its usefulness. The unit question is still, how can the appearance of a substance change without it becoming a different substance? And the investigation they'll touch on is the same that started in lesson 1.2. How does the appearance of a substance change when it changes phase? We're going to hop over to Amplify, and we always start in the lesson brief and remind ourselves that any materials that we need for the lesson can be found here if we need to print them or if we need to see any projections. In step one, warm up. Uh, fairly simple. You are taking a look at two questions based on what you learned in the Titan fact sheet, and if you need to open the Titan fact sheet and refer back to it on your annotations, uh, you can. But uh, you're going to respond to two questions, hand those in. And then we move on to the hands-on lab. And here again, you're going to make a decision as to whether or not you, are, you can and are willing to conduct the hot water in a cup. If you don't have the materials, you can't follow the safety guidelines, and you don't have permission or supervision, then don't do that and just watch the video that's posted on Classroom. But in the previous lesson, we discussed the appearance of substances at the macro scale, the ones we can see with our eye. And... Uh, during everyday phase changes. And these key concepts summarize what you were able to observe with just your human eye. Uh, but having knowledge about the differences between the phases is not enough to help us solve the mystery of the methane lake on Titan. We cannot travel to Titan to see if the methane now holds its shape or if it is invisible. Okay? Like with ice, we can manipulate it in front of us. We're not going to Titan. Uh, we need to understand more about what makes the phases different and what happens during freezing and evaporation. These details cannot always be observed with the human eye. Okay, so we're going to take a look at a projection. Again, you can find this in the lesson brief or in the video. In this unit, we observe substances on two scales. The macro scale, which we said these are things that you can see with the human eye without extra tools. And the molecular scale, uh, and this is under what would also be considered the microscopic scale. This is way smaller than the human eye can see. And in many cases on the molecular scale, we can't see them at all. And we're modeling them in our imagination as to how they behave and what they might look like. So a water molecule doesn't really look like uh, what you see on the right side, but it behaves in a way that if we think about it this way, uh, it'll explain uh, how the water molecules behave. So here are the safety guidelines. I'm not going to read them to you because you're, if you're actually going to do this at home, you're going to need to pull up the safety guidelines and decide for yourself whether you can follow these or not. And if you can, uh, then and you have parent permission, you've got the materials, then go ahead. Otherwise, again, just watch the video. Uh, it's not of this exact task, but it's, it's going to give you all the information you need to, to finish the lesson. Two terms, scale, relative size of things, and molecule, a group of atoms joined together in a particular way you need to be comfortable with. Uh, and so they give it to us in picture form, which, again, goes back to the scale uh, diagrams we just looked at. Liquid water, I can see with my eye, and water molecules, I cannot. Right? In, these, in this activity, if you decide to do it, the setup instructions are there. There's a picture of what you can do. You would need a styrofoam cup and a small plastic cup and the ability to heat water. Uh, if you do that, you can uh, write down your observations here. I'm also going to hop over to the material folder that we link in Classroom for each lesson because there is a copy master, in other words, something you could print out that you can fill out your ideas as well. For some kids, this is more useful in terms of drawing pictures than necessarily writing words in those blanks. Or you could do both. You could draw the pictures here and respond in writing 
back on the Amplify page. And then be sure to hand that in. And then we're heading over to a simulation. Uh, the simulation uh, starts off with, before we get there, a uh, projection. And this again is from Dr. Danielle, Daniela Flores to all of you. You're off to a great start with your investigation. Now, today you will explore the phase change simulation to further investigate Titan's methane lake mystery at the molecular scale. As you read in this last as you read in this last lesson, Titan and Earth are similar in a few important ways. As molecules behave the same way everywhere in the universe, this simulation will help you understand phase changes that occur on Titan. I look forward to your next update. So in this projection, in this memo, what's important for you to notice is the sentence where it says, so as molecules behave the same way everywhere in the universe. With the information we have, uh, we have not had any examples of where they don't behave the same way. So when we travel to the moon or in space, anywhere where we've gathered up information or looked through telescopes, what, what we understand is that molecules seem to behave the same everywhere. So we're going to make that assumption when we go to Titan. If we can understand how molecules operate on Earth, we can then assume we know how they operate on Titan. Okay. You're going to launch the simulation down in the link. And when you get there, your first task is to explore the simulation. And I know with internet the way it can be around, it may take a while to load, so be patient. If you need to open it and then go get a snack and come back, then, then do that. Uh, so here we have a box or a container. Imagine it to be anything you want. And these little balls inside represent the individual molecules. On the left, make sure you notice there's a thermometer. It gives you the temperature in Celsius. On the right, you can switch between substances. Substances A, B, C, and D. Uh, there's a toggle switch to turn on and off gravity. You can, uh, it's grayed out right now, but you can transfer energy in and out if necessary. You can change the speed at which it operates. You can turn the kinetic energy on or off. But at the bottom, uh, make sure you notice that you, because this is a container, and if you were a human and can hold it in your hand, you can shake it, or what they call bump it. Okay? If you click that button, it bumps the container. You can tilt it left and right. In other words, imagine if you had a glass and you were tipping it left and right or like trying to pour it. You get that act action as well in this simulation. So they have you explore the simulation, see what you can learn, uh, and discuss it. In this case, you know, you're probably not going to have somebody next to you to discuss it, but if you have somebody in your house, you're going through this lesson with family members, great chance to talk about what you saw in the simulation. Uh, because then we move on to uh, step four, in which you are making observations at the molecular scale. In other words, what are those little balls doing in the simulation as you look at a gas, a liquid, and a solid? Uh, you also need to, by the end of using the simulation, uh, there are three claims that you're going to choose. Uh, you may not be able to see them on the screen very well, so I'm going to go ahead and pull them up as a projection, show you where those claims come from. In the space question and answer forum, it says post your space and science questions, get some answers. So on the Universal Space Agency forum page, uh, Titan Fan 5 says, I'm trying to determine why the lake on Titan changed phase, but I first need to know what happens to the molecules of a substance when it changes phase. Can anyone help me understand this? And Titan, 5, Titan Fan 5 got some responses. I love space says, I think that molecules in a substance disappear and no longer exist when a substance changes phase. I think this because when a substance goes from liquid to gas, I can no longer see it. Claim two planet lover says, I think that molecules in a substance move differently when a substance changes phase. I think this because when you tilt the container they are in, a solid, liquid, or solid, or sorry, a liquid, gas, and solid do not move in the same way. And science is cool. Uh, gives us claim three, I think that the molecules in the substance change into a new kind of molecule during a phase change. I think this because a liquid looks different from a solid or gas. Now at home, you might have to pull up this from the lesson brief uh, in order to see it better uh, and revisit it. But those are the three claims that you are going to try to uh, answer by the time you get to the end of four. And that is, in, again, found in the second page. Those, same, those are those same three claims you're trying to accomplish. So go back, use that simulation to try to figure out which of these is a solid liquid gas, how are the molecules operating differently, and which of those three claims makes the most sense. When you're done with that, you're hopping over to five, and they're just asking you 
what could you change or add to your models based on what you've learned about molecules and phases so far? So how would you update your responses that you've put in the, uh, in the boxes in this lesson? Uh, if you have the, if you print it off or were drawing your models or pictures, how would you, what, would you add anything to those and improve them and then hand that in? So that's the end of lesson 1.3.